this time I'm going to formalize a certain construction that we uh, have already encountered before. When we were talking about a uh, structure of finitely generated modules over PIDs, we considered this example of a field, for example, C. We viewed it as a subring in C adjoint X. And uh, we used the observation that any the adjoint X module can be viewed as a uh, C vector space. And uh, then we used uh, dimension count to conclude that finitely uh, that that finite uh, dimensional C vector spaces can only come from torsion C adjoint X modules. So in this case, uh, C adjoint X is uh, what is called a C algebra. And uh, the operation of uh, forgetting the C adjoint X module structure and just viewing its, the, the module as a C vector space is called uh, restriction of scalars. So let me uh, start with uh, explaining what these words mean. The first definition, let us uh, fix a commutative associative unital ring R. Then an R algebra is uh, this, the data of uh, an R module A equipped with uh, with an R by linear operation which is called multiplication. The operation takes uh, two elements in A and uh, produces one element of A. So it is also, by abuse of notation, is denoted by a dot. And if we have two algebras, a homomorphism of R algebras F from A to B is a is an R module homomorphism which also respects multiplication. multiplication of A.
So we can we can note immediately that uh, in particular an R algebra is a ring. So A is a ring and an R algebra homomorphism is in particular a ring homomorphism. Remark one. And R algebra A is a ring because our bilinearity of uh, multiplication is the same as uh, saying that this operation is additive in each argument. So we have a plus b times c is equal to a, a c plus b c for every a b c in, in a. And also a times b plus c is equal to a b plus a c. And for every triple of elements in A. And this is a distributivity which ensures that uh, the operations of addition and multiplication in A uh, are. Uh, form a ring structure. But uh, also an additional axiom that comes from our bilinearity is that we can pull out scalars from each argument. So for every scalars R and S in R, if we have elements A and B in A, then R A times S B. So we can pull scalars from each argument. This would give us R S times, and this is uh, multiplying an element of A by a scalar of R because A is an R module. So this should be equal to R S times A B. And A B is the operation of multiplication in the algebra. So this is an additional axiom that comes from our bilinearity of multiplication. And then, in particular, an R algebra homomorphism, F from A to B, is a ring homomorphism. So, okay, uh, because it is an R module homomorphism, F is additive. And this is one axiom of a ring homomorphism. And then, because it preserves multiplication in A, F of AB is equal to F of A times F of B. So this is the same as saying that F is a ring homomorphism. But additionally, F is an R module homomorphism. So it is not just additive, but it also respects scalar multiplication. So for every R in R, if we multiply our element of, an, of the algebra by R, then its image in B should be equal to R times F of A. So this multiplication is multiplying an element of B by a scalar because B is also an R module. So this is an additional axiom. So 
I, I want to note that we can also define when our, an R algebra A is associative, uh, commutative and unital in the same fashion when we define uh, when just a ring is. So we just say that say that the operation of multiplication in A is uh, respectively associative, commutative, or unital. And before I restrict my consideration again to associative commutative, commutative unital algebras, I want to give examples of algebras that are not like that. So we already saw that C join X. So this is an associative commutative algebra with uh, a unit. But we can also define polynomials in uh, variable variables that do not commute. So C angular brackets x comma y is a C algebra of non-commutative polynomials. Uh, which means that uh, monomials in x and y are just uh, formal sequences of x and y, or like words uh, in two letters, uh, such that x times y does not is not equal to y times x. So monomials in this algebra are 1, x, y, x, y, y, x, as well as uh, their powers. And then we have, uh, for example, x, x, y, or x, y, x or y, x, x, and uh, these three monomials are all uh, different and linearly independent, etc. Then, an interesting example is uh, if R is any commutative, associative, and unital ring, then we can consider the algebra of matrices, n by n matrices, with coefficients in R. So homomorphisms are linear homomorphisms from the free rank n module to itself form an R algebra. And this algebra it is associative, unital, because we have uh, the identity homomorphism, but not commutative when n is greater than 1.
bit more general example is when we assume that R and A are both commutative, associative, and unitary rings. And F is a ring homomorphism, which also preserves uh, multiplicative identity. Then A is uh, naturally an R algebra. Where we where we have already seen that A is an R module. Yeah, come on. We are the following operation. So R First a to a sends the pair r comma a to f of r times a. So this is multiplication in a, and the operation of multiplication in a coming from the ring structure in a. is R by linear, which makes A into an R algebra. So it is uh, distributive, so we are not going to check by additivity, but uh, we want to see that if we have two elements R and S from R and A and B from A, then multiplying A by the scalar R by uh, this definition and then multiplying in A this by S times B we want to check that this is equal to Rs times AB. So let us write by definition that this is f of R times A times f of S times B. And this is all multiplication in A. And note that A is a commutative algebra. So it is in particular a commutative ring. So we can move f of s to the right. So we get f of r, f of s, a, b. And f is a ring homomorphism, so it is f of r, s times a, b. And uh, this is what we wanted to show, that we can pull out scalars from the a multiplication. But what is more, if we restrict ourselves to just uh, commutative associative unital algebras, so from now on, uh, we assume that all algebras as well as rings are commutative associative and with unit, then in this world all R algebras come from this construction. So I formulate the theorem as follows. Giving an R algebra A 
is equivalent to giving a ring homomorphism f from r to a. For the proof, we know that we essentially did uh, the backwards direction. If we have a ring homomorphism from R to A, then we can define a natural R algebra structure on A. And in the forward direction, if we have uh, an R algebra A, so we have a So we know that A is an R module, and uh, we have a bilinear map from A cross A to A, R bilinear. Then we want to define a morphism. Then we define a homomorphism F from R to A as follows. So F of R will be equal to R times 1A. So one is one, one sub a is the multiplicative unit in a with respect to its uh, multiplication, and uh, this is this multiplication comes from the R module structure, and we check that this is a homomorphism. F of R plus s is equal to R plus s times 1, and an R module structure is distributed, so we have R times 1A plus S times 1A, which is F of R plus F of S. And F is also multiplicative because of R by linearity of multiplication, we have R times S times 1A. This is the definition of R on the product of R S. And, and then we can write uh, 1 sub A as uh, 1 times 1. And uh, by, by linearity, like similar to this, we have R times uh, 1 A. This is an element of algebra and we can multiply it by S 1 sub A which is precisely f of r times f of s. And, and so we prove that f is a homomorphism of rings, which is, which is also uh, a homomorphism in our definition with the additional restriction that multiplicative identity should go to multiplicative identity. And this is because our modules satisfy the unity axiom. So anything multiply, any, any element of the module, in particular 1 sub a multiplied by 1 in R, should not be changed. And you can, and you can, uh, and you can check that uh, if we apply this construction to, the, to uh, our constructed homomorphism, then we get back uh, um, our, our algebra that we started with. And 
this is why these two constructions are equivalent. So in view of the theorem that we have just proved, uh, I, will, I will talk about, when I talk about A algebra, when I talk about our algebras, I would uh, sometimes uh, use the notation of a homomorphism that corresponds to the, to the R algebra structure. So this is called the structure homomorphism of R algebras. And when we have such a homomorphism, we can naturally view any A module as an R module. And this is the next definition that I'm giving. So definition slash lemma, because we will have to prove that structures are well-defined. So we have an R algebra. Let's say that the morphism is F, as here. Then any A module M is uh, naturally an R module uh, and uh, this, this is called the restriction of scalars. Viewing M as an R module is called the restriction of scalars. And uh, part two of the lemma is that if we have a homomorphism of A modules, then phi is also naturally a homomorphism of R, of R modules. Let me prove this. So first I want to define an R module structure on M. So I define MF from R cross M to M that takes an element R comma M and sends it to F of R where F is the structure homomorphism times M using the a module structure on M. So then notation for every R in R, R dot M or RM will denote this uh, struct this our module structure. And now I want to check the axioms of a uh, module. So first check distributivity. So if I have a sum of uh, two scalars from R and I apply it to M, this is F of R plus R prime, but F is a ring homomorphism, so we get F of R plus F of R prime to M. 
and uh, because M is an A module, this operation is uh, distributive. So we get f of R M plus f of R prime M, and this is exactly R times M plus R prime times M. So we checked distributivity in this case, and uh, now if we have one scalar and a sum of two elements from the module M. This is f of r uh, applied to m plus m prime. And so, again, by distributivity of uh, multiplication by scalars from A, we get that, that this would be equal to f of r times m, I wrote it as just r times m, plus f of r times m prime. And uh, finally, associativity. So this follows from multiplicativity of uh, f, f of r r prime times m is f of r times f of r prime times m. And by associativity of a, we can pretend that uh, we don't have uh, these brackets. And if we have, uh, if we multiply by a unit from M, a unit from M goes to a unit, a unit from R goes to a unit from A, because we have a homomorphism of uh, associative commutative unital rings, that one sub A times M, which is equal to M. And the checks uh, for part two, that uh, a homomorphism of A modules induces a homomorphism of R modules. Uh, this, uh, the checks are very formal too, so you can uh, treat it as an exercise or like as a reality check. And if you have uh, problems, uh, please contact me. And so we deal with the situation when we have a ring homomorphism and any A module can be viewed as an R module. And the natural question is whether we can uh, go in the opposite direction. And uh, given an R module M, can we construct an A module from this module? So this operation is called Bayes extension or extension of scalars. But the construction is more involved uh, than, than just forgetting the a module structure. So now we have uh, an R algebra structure on A. And uh, let's say that M is an R module. Then a tensor n over r because a is an r module too so we can tensor them then this is naturally an a module and uh, taking this is called uh, base extension of m And uh, furthermore, if uh, we have n to n prime, 
a homomorphism of R modules. Then Psi uh, So this is what you can also write as a tensor high or one tensor phi. So psi is an induced homomorphism of A modules. A tensor M goes to A tensor M prime, tensor over R. And it takes an element, it takes a tensor sum of a i's tensor and i's to the sum, the sum is finite from 1 to m. A i tensor phi of um, i. Let me denote the upper bound by k so that there is no confusion between the letters. Um, you can see that uh, I don't change a i here. And uh, this is why we can write psi as one tensor phi, because one does not change uh, the first component of uh, of a tensor. And let me prove this. So first I construct an A module structure on A tensor N. So I need to define scalar multiplication A cross A tensor N to A tensor N over R. And I define scalar multiplication by taking any A and any tensor BI tensor NI. And the result will be multiplying the first component using the algebra structure on A. So using multiplication in A, we get A BI tensor NI. So the sum is again, is again finite. I goes from one to sum L or something. So first, uh, we need to check that this operation is well defined. So so that for every fixed A in A, this operation of multiplying by A is uh, a well-defined homomorphism. So check, for example, one relation. If we have times if we have B tensor M plus M prime, this is equal as a tensor to B tensor M plus B tensor M prime. So we want, so this sum is equal to zero 
and we want to check that if we apply A to these elements, uh, like to each summon separately, then we still get zero. So what we get is A, B, tensor M plus M prime minus <coughs> AB tensor M minus AB tensor M prime. And so now the first component is the same in all the tensors. And so by uh, tensor relations, we have that this sum is equal to zero. And similarly, we check uh, all other my linearity relations between uh, tensors. Then the next check is that this is an A module structure. And let us again check that, for example, it is, uh, this operation is associative. So we have AB times uh, some tensor B tensor M. And now, uh, because this operation is defined uh, on elementary tensors and extended by additivity, we, it is enough to check this on elementary tensors. So we check that this is AB times CM is equal to ABC tensor M. But then multiplication in A is associated by our assumptions on all the ring and algebras. So we get that this is equal to A times BC tensor M. And then this is equal to, like the tensor in the bracket is equal to B applied to C tensor M. And so we check the associativity. In a similar way, we check all other module axioms for A tensor M. And to prove the rest of uh, this level, uh, you would need to check that one tensor phi, or psi defined as uh, on this line, is a homomorphism of R module. And uh, you would see that all the checks are uh, almost repetitive. So. This is the end uh, of the proof, and we prove that uh, this operation of base extension is well defined. This operation might seem complicated because uh, we use tensor multiplication, but in fact, you have already worked extensively with uh, base extension as uh, this example shows. So we can view C as an R algebra because R is a subring of C. So this gives an R algebra structure. And so any R vector space B can be made or extended to uh, 
to a C vector space. C tensor V over R. And using our properties of tensor product, we can write C as R direct sum with uh, Ri. And by additivity, this is isomorphic to V direct sum with uh, another copy of V because Ri is isomorphic to R. So I denote this copy by IV. So any vector in uh, this phase extension, denoted V sub C, Is, uh, is uniquely written uh, as a sum of its real part, V1 plus I V2, where V1 and V2 have uh, all real components. Okay, and now let's say that we have uh, a matrix M, square matrix M, which corresponds to a homomorphism of uh, Rn to itself. So it is N by N matrix you know that over R it 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 is not necessarily that we can choose a Jordan normal form for M so we cannot always bring M to a Jordan normal form over R. So what you did in linear algebra is you extended scalars to C. Uh, so you said that M induces a matrix M sub C in from C from Cn to Cn, still a matrix with all real coefficients, but now viewed uh, as a complex matrix, uh, this matrix can be brought to a Jordan normal form. So over fields, by extension, to corresponds to something that uh, you have already done and uh, hopefully something that you can believe is natural. A word of warning is that by extension and restriction of scalars. Are not mutually inverse operations. In this example where we consider an R algebra C let us take 
um, our vector space B. Then we extend scalars to C and we get B sub C, like here. And then if we view this C tensor B back as an R vector space, uh, we got this direct sum decomposition into V plus IV. So if V is finite dimensional, then dimension of V sub C over R is equal to twice the dimension of V. So V sub C is not isomorphic over R to V. Uh, if uh, V is finite dimensional or zero. And conversely, if uh, I consider W in C vector space, then I can restrict scalars to R and then uh, uh, extend the base again. So I get C tensor R W. So again, using the same isomorphism, we get that dimension of over C of C tensor W over R is equal to twice the dimension of W. And so again, uh, we cannot restrict scalars and then go back to the same uh, C vector space. And over, over rings, it is in general more complicated to uh, describe uh, compositions of these uh, operations. <laughs>